Today, I'm gonna to go over the cold brew toddy system, which is one of the most popular methods for brewing cold brew by yourself at home. Starbucks actually uses the toddy system to brew cold brew in stores, and they also sell a number of different kits online in a number of different varieties and packages and all sorts of combinations. Or you can just buy it directly from toddy. The link is below in the description of this video if you are interested in picking up the cold brew toddy system. This video today is gonna to go over the pros and cons of the system. This is not how to make cold brew generally, However, we will talk a little bit about how you use the toddy system to make cold brew, but actually making it is in another video. This is just a review of the toddy system. Let's get started. First of all, the toddy system consists of this white jug primarily, which is the brewing device for the coffee. As you can see, there's a hole in the bottom of the brewing system that allows you to plug the bottom, put in a filter in that indentation, and then the coffee brews within this container for 16, 20, 24 hours, whatever you want it to be. This plug here is what you use to plug the bottom of the system. I'm back. All right, nailed it that time. Okay, so you put the plug in the bottom. Do not put the plug in the top. The entire point of the plug is that you have the liquid and the coffee and the filter inside and then you pull the plug out and all the liquid drains out. So if you put in the top, you're basically screwed and you won't be able to make your coffee when you need to make it. Next, we have the filter. The filter goes in the indentation in the bottom of the brewing system. Now we're able to drain the liquid through the filter, through the system into this glass container. So after the 20 or 24 hours of brewing, you're gonna have the plug in the bottom and you're gonna have the coffee and liquid and filter in this white container. Then you're gonna take it and place it on top of the glass, pull the plug, and the liquid will then drain out into your glass container, thus creating the concentrate, which you can then put the lid on as such and put in your refrigerator for a week or more, depending on how you wanna store the cold brew, which can be quite a long time if you desire. So the entire system is pretty easy to use. You just pour the liquid and coffee in the white container, then you drain it in the glass, and voila, you've got cold brew coffee. All right, on the positive side, the container is large. It holds about a gallon of liquid. I didn't really measure it, it's somewhere in that neighborhood. And you can make a very large portion of concentrate. If you do a ratio like two to one or three to one of water to coffee, then that entire glass container is concentrate and it will then dilute further, so you don't need to use very much of the concentrate when you're making your coffee. So that's great, it's a very large container and you can make a lot for a long period of time. If you're getting creative and you're throwing different things into your coffee, like jalapenos, lemons, cinnamon sticks, whatever the case may be, you can also put that in this container. Not every cold brew brewing device will allow you to do that. Some of them are too small, they're a little bit restricted, you've got the French press method where you're pushing things down, it's kind of a pain. So if you're doing something like that and you're getting creative, the tie system is really good. Third, it's fairly easy to use. There are some systems that are easier, like the Coffee Panda. There are some that are harder, like the French press and cheesecloth methods. But when everything comes down to it, it's kind of middle of the road in terms of complexity, but it has a lot of benefits with the size, easy cleanup, and things like that. All right, when it comes to the cons you need to look out for, there are a few things to keep on your radar. First of all, you have the plug and the filter, which are kind of small and a little bit easy to lose. The plug in particular. You don't want that to go down the drain or throw it in the trash or your two-year-old grabs it and runs around the house and hides it in a toy bin, whatever the case may be. Not that that's ever happened to me. But if you do lose it, you'll have to go online and buy more and that's just kind of a pain and then you can't make cold brew and then you cry and all that sort of thing. So the plug in the bottom, kind of a pain. The next thing is the filter. And if the filter gets too dirty and then you have thick grounds along with maybe some crazy ingredients you've thrown in there and the consistency is a little thicker than normal. If you pull the plug out of the bottom, the liquid may not come through if it can't filter through the coffee and the filter itself correctly. And that is the worst case scenario because then you have this entire container of stuff that you wanna filter out and you just can't. And then you're kinda of screwed. So you don't want that to happen. So if you keep your filter really clean or maybe buy more filters, That'll work out well. I did just see on the website that they have filter bags now that I guess are kind of like one-time use things. So you could try those out. I haven't personally tried them, but it's another option. But the filtering can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. 
On the cleaning side, not too hard to clean, but you do have to clean out the filter and clean out the big white container and then clean the glass. Not a huge deal. The size of the toddy kit can be a little bit big when you compare it to other methods. If you're using the mason jar or a French press or like the coffee panda I mentioned before, those are all fairly small and they kind of fit in one little area and you're doing everything in the same sort of device. Uh, when you have that big, large white container, it's a little bit of a pain. Finally, in most cases, you probably have what you need to make cold brew at home without actually buying anything. It might not be the toddy kit, but if you have a mason jar and cheesecloth, or you have a French press, or even you have a standard coffee maker with filters, you can basically make cold brew. And the toddy kit is 40 bucks, that's before any sort of shipping. So if you're buying the toddy kit, it's 40 bucks, not the biggest deal, but also not free. So if you're wanting to make cold brew at home and you don't want to spend a bunch of money, toddy kit's probably not the right way to go. That's all I have for you today. Those are the pros and cons, some things to look out for. The Toddy cold brewing kit was the first device I used to make cold brew, and it's worked out really great for me. When I'm making things with different ingredients, it's awesome, but I kind of feel like it's cumbersome at times, and there's a lot of like little moving parts, but that's just me being a little bit picky. If you liked the video, please like, subscribe, comment below. If you didn't like the video, please like, subscribe, comment below, and just let me know that it sucked, and then I'll make it better. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you next time.